Hello and welcome back to another Rightly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the tea drinking author who just finished his cup of rather pleasant tea. Still, never mind that. I said I was going to come back this week and talk a little bit about a pen that I've had for a while, I've used for some time, and what did I think of it? It's this, the Twisby. Now, I have lots of Twisbys. I've got one Twisby Go that six years ago my little Rhodesian Ridgeback discovered on the floor and therefore chewed to fragments. I have a second one that is a 1.1 mil stub, a blue smoky coloured one, and that's superb. And I use that all the time for doing my reviews of inks because it means that I've got a consistent nib, consistent flow, all the rest of it. It just makes it easier. And with a 1.1 millimetre stub, you can get a really nice view on how good the shading is from different inks and so on. So that's all good. And I like Twisbees. They're very plasticky. But that has an appeal because they are very reasonably priced. I like that. And although they're plasticky, it gives you the feel that actually this is something that if it's stolen in your office or you just mislay it, as I recently mislaid my Caveco um, propelling pencil, it doesn't actually matter because they're not. it's not as though you're losing something like a Visconti that's worth 600 quid or a Pinedo worth 400 quid. It's, you know, a 20 or 30 pound pen, which is not ideal, but it's bearable if you mislay it. So what do I like about this? What do I dislike? Well, I've said already, the thing I dislike is the clip. It is an astonishingly robust clip. It will grip hold of a shirt. Here's a shirt pocket. And it sits there very comfortably. The trouble is when you get close to it, I don't know if you can see, but these edges are really quite sharp. And even though you can pull it out, he says trying to, it is really stiff. And I just have the feeling that these edges are too sharp and they're going to hack my shirt pockets to hell and back. What else do I dislike? Nothing, I love it. Okay, I mean, it could come in a slightly more funky color, but I like this blue. It's a pleasant blue. It has been with me routinely, very regularly, and yet it hasn't actually got any scratches. So what's it got? Let's have a look. It's got the end, end cap is an example of the Twisby logo. Very nice. Bottom has nothing much. It's five sided. It won't roll off your desk too easily. It has the Twisby name there. If I can get it into the light, Twisby. Um, the cap pulls off. Very simple, but very positive, as you can hear. The cap itself is just a cylinder with this strangely designed shirt ripping clip. The feed and the nib are all very nicely done. You can see all the feed because it's got this really nice clear plastic, beautifully polished plastic, acrylic, whatever it might be, who cares, but it's nice. It has a slight flaring out to the bottom, so your fingers don't slip straight down onto the nib. That's all good. And it has the lip at the end, which is where the clip works for the cap, I assume. When you take it apart, it has a filling mechanism that is deliciously easy. It is literally a case of push down on the plunger here when the nib is stuck in a bottle of ink push down, release it, it's spring-loaded, and it just sucks ink up. It is that simple. There's also a converter so that you can use standard cartridges. 
I've never actually used that. I much prefer having the choice of different inks to use. Now, this has got a black ink in it. Why? Well, I mentioned last week that I have a specific use for this. It is my out and about pen. So for example, I'll go out and about and I will carry a notebook of some sort. It could be that, it could be one of the William Hannas, it could be some of my different uh, cahiers. It could be anything. But what I will always have, for example, it's on my, in my pocket now, is a notebook. And the notebook I carry is just for sketching. So I will make sketches of things as I go past. There was a nice house there. I, that was at uh, Swanwick. I was giving a talk there on how to write books. This was um, a little house in, I think it was Borton on the Water, I'm not too sure, but I was there with uh, the Smithsonian giving talks on crime writers and crime writing over the years. I always have a notebook with me for sketching in, nothing else. This is the last moleskin notebook I'll buy because it is useless with um, watercolours, but it is handy for just sketching. But you see, that's the point. I can take this out with me and it's ideal for sketching. It has currently got an ink that is by Mont Blanc. I'm not overly keen on Mont Blanc. I think they're vastly overrated and vastly overpriced, but I will admit this, their black ink, which is, I think they call it Registrar's Ink or something, but their black ink is actually jolly good for sketching because it is waterproof. So I can do a sketch and then watercolour over it and the ink stays where it is. I was using some, uh, let's see, cross pens black ink before that, which is rather delightful because it's much darker black. This is a more dark ish earl grey by diamine i would say the mont blanc ink it's not a true black the cross ink was a true black the only trouble was it also smudged and looked bloody horrible when i tried to watercolor over it so it wasn't any good this however is perfect what do i do when i go out and about well i did mention this briefly last week but i now have a little portable paint set what's in here I will show you. This is what I take out with me every day. I have... I'm trying to do this in a sensible sort of an order, but it's probably not going to work that way. So, first of all, I have a little water bottle. This is not just a water bottle. It's also a spray bottle, so I can get my paper damp when I want to. I have a simple little... Just in case I haven't got my normal notebook, I have a little field notes notebook. I'll always have a little A6 notebook in there because it's handy. I also have an A6 sketch pad, which is not just a sketch pad. This is a really good watercolouring notebook. I can do quick sketches, finish them off, come back home, and it gives me ideas for other things. There's one I haven't actually coloured in yet, but you get the idea. There's loads of really um, ideal subjects for me to paint around here, and that's nice. Here, there is just some kitchen towel absorbent paper, which I can use to clean my brushes on. It's all basic stuff, this, but you know, it helps. This is a water brush so that when I'm out and about, if I'm in a real hurry, I can just use this. You squeeze the black section here and it squirts water out. The water is all held in the main body of the pen, as you can see, and you can just use this as a sketching paintbrush. Really useful, I love them. I like water brushes, they're just nice. But if I've got a little more time, I have folding, traveling, paint brushes and these are all and here we've got a round for example I can tell it's a round because it says round except it's upside down that's better it says round and you pull it apart 
you stick it in there and you have a moderately long, perfectly serviceable, very good Rosemary & Co paintbrush. And I've got a, a round, I've got a flat, I've got a rigger and I've got a sword type. So I've got a nice variety of four brushes which I can use for little quick sketches. Now, of course, all of this is utterly pointless if you haven't got something in terms of, oh, I don't know, colour. So the last thing in here is my little mini paint box. Now, I spoke about this briefly last week. This is a portable painter micro palette. And it's brilliant. It's absolutely genius. I will demonstrate it again now, purely for the sheer pleasure of myself getting the thing out again. But it is really, it's less than an inch thick. It is smaller than a credit card in terms of overall dimensions. It's about two by three inches roughly, I suppose. Um, it has this nice little hole drilled in the top here, so you can put a bit of string in. Now I put that string in purely because it means that when I've got it, in my bag here, all I have to do is grab the bit of string and it comes out nice and easily. Silly little thing, but it, it's just one of those things that makes it a bit more usable. So this tiny little thing, take off the lid and got to demonstrate how to do this properly. Take off the lid there, then there's a lip. Let's start that again. I seem to recall this is what I did last time. So, you have your paint box. You put your thumb underneath the thing at the bottom there, and you've got one mixing well. In the front here, you might just be able to see, there's a little tab, pick up the tab, and the main thing comes out. You slide that on there, like so. You take your mixing, section, slide that on the opposite side, like so, and then you can lift up here, and you have a water carrier, you have two mixing wells, two larger mixing wells, and six paints. Or you can have eight paints, or you can have 12 paints, or 16. There's basically a number of different sized wells that you could fit in there, which means that you've got an almost infinite number of paints. Oh, I can hear professional artists say, that's terrible because they're so small, you'd never carry enough paint. No, you wouldn't. But this is for taking out daily, out and about, and just doing a quick sketch when you get the time or the incentive. And it's ideal for that. My little water bottle, that was enough water to do um, about an A4 painting, enough to fill that and to squirt a load of water over the paint box. So this is really useful, goes nicely with it. I'm actually going to put up at the end of this video a very quick and not particularly good, little bit fast and dirty painting, which I'm gonna finish off in a moment now that the paint's drying with this. But for me, this with the Mont Blanc ink, I'm going to try it with something like Rora und Klingner as well, because they have jolly good inks, and I don't think they should bung things up. But it's a superb pen. It's really good for writing. I prefer more flexible nibs. This is a really quite hard steel nib, but it's very fine. It produces really good lines. It's ideal for sketching. The ink is not as black as I would like, but it is fully waterproof. And when I look at a painting like this one, you can hardly see where I put the marks in with the pen, which is really how it ought to be, I think. I like that. So today I've been basically just testing a different type of watercolour paper. I've had this stuff knocking around for quite some time. I got it from Jackson's Art some time ago when they were doing a bit of a sale of weird and wonderful papers, so I bought a, a job lot. And I'm thinking I might start using it for 
uh, A4, A5 size sketch pads that I can take out and about. So I'm going to stitch some of these sheets of paper together and then take them out with me. And then we'll see what happens. I might be able to find some new things to sketch with this as well. Anyway, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this, don't forget, do hit the like and subscribe and all that other good stuff. And if you've been one of those delightful people who's bought me a coffee recently, thank you so much for that. And a special thanks go to all my patrons because it keeps me videoing. It makes me come back and do a bit more all the time. I'm hoping next time I'm going to be doing some Dominant Industry inks. The only thing about that is it takes a lot longer to record the ink reviews, um, mainly because of the amount of time to set up the camera, set up the lighting, work out what I'm going to say, fill the pen with ink, rinse it, fill it with a different ink, and all. it all just takes a lot of time. But I am going to get round to it because I am very, very keen on Dominant Industry inks. I think they're gorgeous. So... I need to do more writing with them. And apart from that, well, if you want to support an author, you know how to do it. Go and buy the books. And apart from that, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks a lot. Here's a quick view on how I did the latest painting. Cheers. Take care.